is it really so bad to snack before bedtime? Well, more studies are yielding surprising answers about weight gain and late night munching. Heidi Mitchell, she reports on the trend for the Wall Street Journal. She joins us right now. Heidi, you spoke to one professor and dietitian to get some answers to this dilemma. And we're going to go through the specific recommendations in just a moment but, moment. but overall, it seems there's some nuggets of good news in here for late night snackers. Well, the good news is... Uh you should try breakfast and maybe then you won't be snacking so late. You should also try and get a good night's sleep because the studies are showing that the worse quality sleep you have and the less sleep you get, the more likely you are to snack late at night. And you really just want to avoid eating about two hours before you go to bed, no matter really what it is you're eating. And if, There's you, if you are going to snack, and maybe this is this is just the wishful thinking on my part, trying to latch on to any nugget of good news, but there are some good snacks versus bad snacks. Is that right? There are, there are. There, so what you want to avoid is anything with tyramine, which is surprisingly in aged cheeses and processed meats and soy sauce. Um, it helps keep you alert, and so you don't want to eat that before you go to bed. But then what, what are pretty good snacks, actually, if you're hungry, um, under 200 calories, it's okay to have almonds, which are high in magnesium, bananas, which are high in, in, cal in potassium, and um, yogurt, which is high in, um, in calcium. And those can actually help you relax and go to sleep. And even turkey, which we know from Thanksgiving, is, is high in tryptophan, which your body converts to serotonin and uh, melatonin, which can really help you sleep. But you still want to keep the calorie count to below 200 and to, to try and not eat within two hours of bedtime. Heidi, what about teenagers? I mean, anybody who has a teenager, in particular a teenage boy in the house, they know they just po can't possibly get enough food in them during the day. Is it fine for them to go ahead and snack at night because they're growing so much that it's not going to really matter? You know, curiously, they do need more calories, it's true, but they still should follow the same rules. They should have the same kinds of snacks, more of them, but they should still try not to eat, you know, two hours before they go to bed because your body sends all of the blood to your, to your digestive system after you've eaten and not to your extremities and all of your organs, which will help, you know, in, in healthy growth. And if they're going through a growth spurt, yes, they need more calories, but they also need good quality sleep. And they want that blood to be flowing throughout their body to help all of their organs, not just their digestive system. You were mentioning eating earlier in the day. You mentioned, obviously, breakfast being critical. And if you can't get to breakfast, at least to lunch. But, you know, we know so many people in the office, uh, you know, I know so many people here in this office who often don't even get around to their first real meal until 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. What does, that, uh, what does that mean for them? Well, studies have shown that, that you can... People that start eating later in the day, say about 3 p.m., they will pack in the calories, the 4,000 calories that you'll eat in a day. They'll pack it in between 3 and 12. And even Dr. Hare, who I interviewed for this story, she found that across the board with her uh, her patients who have obesity concerns and diabetes. It's really unhealthy. So what she suggests is that you have something by 10 o'clock, say, even if you don't don't eat breakfast, you're not a breakfast person, have a yogurt, have some milk. Um, she suggests, you know, maybe a toast, something light to keep you going, because then those cravings won't happen way later in the day. It really is correlated. If you eat early in the morning, you won't be as hungry later in the day. And they really don't totally know why. All right. Well, you've just justified my two breakfasts a day, Heidi. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. More in the Personal Journal section tomorrow.